like you're not. My name is Bill Golden. Wayne Burst, nice Wayne, meet glad you, to meet you. Okay, so guys, we're going to talk about water today. Uh, I'm an economist, by the way. You know about economists. We tend to lie all the time, and we're wrong most of the time. And all you got to do is turn on CNN or Fox to figure out how bad economists are doing right now. But we're going to talk about the economic impact of Lemus. Uh, and as soon as I figure out how to work this thing, we'll get on, on with it. I am old, and I'm technologically challenged, okay? So if I'm sitting here talking about something, and I got the wrong slide, then jump up and say, Golden, you're on the wrong slide, man. Get, get straight. Uh, let's see if we can make this go. Big question on Lemus. Okay, local enhanced management areas. We're going to reduce water use, right? What happens when we reduce water use? Are you going to make more money? Are you going to make less money? How many things are you going to make more money? Oh, guys. Guys. How many things are you going to make less money? Boy, nobody in the group wants to answer. What do you think is going to happen to land price? Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Come on, guys. I, don't, I, I, I hate people not to participate in my talks. Those are the big questions. What's going to happen? Okay? Everybody wants to know. Guys, I, I was an irrigated farmer for years. I can remember when the government came in and said, we're going to cut your water use 50%. It scared me absolutely to death. Okay? All of a sudden, you know, I've got a recipe, just like y'all do, for growing corn. Okay, you put on this much water, this much fertilizer, this much seed, you're going to make this much money. And guess what? When we make this much money, mom's happy. She gets to remodel the house. Okay, the kids are happy. They get new cars. We've got all these expenses that we're worried about. And when somebody tells you, hey, we want you to change the way you do things, we get really nervous, don't we? Okay, so those are valid questions. I want to show you that we're going to talk about a mistake I made. Okay? Now, a lot of you will say, Golden, you make mistakes every day. I made a mistake back in 2006. These are production functions. Okay, they tell how much corn we're going to have produced versus how much water we use. The revenue function tells us how much revenue we're going to generate or how much profit we're going to generate based on how much water we use. Okay, these functions are all based on the assumption that as producers, we're efficient with water use. Okay, that we're not putting on 20 inches when we need to only put on 10 inches. That we're not putting on 200 units of nitrogen when we really only need to put on 150. So these functions are based on the assumption of efficiency. In fact, uh, when we did this back uh, in 2006, we assumed producers up in the Lima were 95% efficient. Come on guys, we can't be 100% efficient, right? <coughs> But 95% is a good efficiency rating, okay? And as you can, you can talk any way around it, if these production functions are true, and they're true, they've been verified by the Risk Management Agency. What this says, if you reduce water use, what's going to happen to yield? Come down. on, guys. It's going to go down. You're going to go down. What's going to happen to profits? Down. down. Gonna go, that's what it says, guys. Can't get by that. If we use that as a model, for the future, what this says is you're going to lose yield, you're going to lose profit. Okay? Well, guys, we did this study in 2006 for the Lima. They asked me to come in and make projections. And I told those producers in the Sheridan 6, if you reduce water use, you're going to reduce your yield and you're going to reduce your profit. That's what's going to happen. That's what those curves say. And guys, everybody in the high plains uses those curves. <coughs> Okay? And I said, what you've got to do is say, are you prepared to lose a little money today to extend the life of the aquifer so you have more money way back here in the later years? Are you prepared to do that? Because that's what you're going to do. And the farmer said, look, my granddaddy irrigated this land, my daddy irrigated this land. If I want my grandkids to irrigate this land, I've got to do something. So yes, we will sacrifice a little profit to do that. And that was their motivation for starting Sheridan 6. After seven years, what we found is that the producers inside the Lima used 10.3 inches 
of water, irrigation water on their corn. They produced 218 bushels. They made $375 an acre. Outside the Lima, they used 13.4, nearly 25% more water. They did produce two more bushels, okay, but they made less money. And as this data started coming in, we guys, we were fortunate. The producers were really nervous. They gave me all their economic data. Okay, you're not going to find very many producers that are going to give an economist. Say, here, here's our yield, here's our fertilizer bill, here's our uh, equipment bill, here's our land rent. Would y'all give that information to me? Who will give me that information? <laughs> I would love to have that information. But we had a group of about seven or eight producers that farmed inside the Lima and outside the Lima that I would meet with every year and they would give me this information. Okay? And by about the fourth or the fifth year, they were laughing at me. They said, Golda, you said we were going to lose money. We're not losing money. We're going to make money. Okay? That's their data, guys. That's not my data. That goes from producers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did I break it? No, go one way. Okay, so why didn't this model work? Who can tell me why that model didn't work? Physics. Everybody used it. It's wrong. Huh? Because it's wrong. Because it's well, the concept isn't wrong, but the assumptions that we use to build it are wrong. How about the environment play in that? One of those kind of wet years up there too? Uh, we're going to look at those here in a little while. And the answer is no, they weren't. They started out a little wet, they got a little dry. Okay, if I remember right. Okay. How did I how did I construct these? Constant efficiency. Efficiency. Efficiency at 95%. Every one of the farmers said, Bill, we thought we were efficient. Okay? But we have learned how to be more efficient. Okay? We pay attention to our input cost. We pay attention if, if we think it's going to rain in three or four days and we're, and we're getting a little stress on our corn today, we wait on that rain. We use soil moisture monitors. We don't go out there and you know kind of kick the dirt and say, well, we need to irrigate. We do it efficiently. Now guys, these, even these efficient producers, we did a study of, of uh, soil moisture levels before the season and soil moisture after the season, and what do you think we found? Come on guys, help me out here. Your moisture was up? Huh? Their moisture was up? No, moisture went up. They had more water soil moisture at the end of the season than they had at the start of the season. They still used more water than what they really needed to use. Okay? Guys, remember I told you the production functions were uh, authorized by RMA. They came in and looked. And to do that, they had to take y'all's water use yields, your water use, and your RMA crop insurance yields and combine them. Okay, to give us this chart. Unfortunately, they won't give them to me anymore. Okay, and what this shows is corn yield, RMA corn yield, against the water use reports. And what you see is that we've got guys growing 200 bushels of corn on 10 inches of water. In the same county, in the same year, we got people using 30 inches of water. What does that look like? Are they efficient? Well, I wish I could say that this is definitive, but it's not. Okay, I mean, in reality, the guys on the left side of the graph could be, uh, could not have had as much rain as the guys on the right side of the graph. The guys on the left side of the graph could be really deep sand. Okay? And so they would use more water. But guys, this is kind of informative. And I showed this to a group of producers, and one of the producers said, no, Bill, you're right, it, it, it improved. He said, but I know that farmer over there, he farmed next to me. And this is how much water I use. Okay, so unfortunately we cannot get RMA to give us this data anymore, to be able to add soil type and precipitation to it. But guys, it just doesn't look like we're as efficient as we thought we were. Okay, what about the aquifer? Okay, these are brownies <laughs> graphs, so brownies if I mess up. This graph shows annual water use against uh, something, against decline rate. Okay? 
you'll notice that, nope, I can't make it do it. This is all pre -lean. Okay? That's water use versus decline rate. What do we have? Two and a half, three foot? All these in the lighter color up here at the top are post lean. Okay, they're using less water use, and all of a sudden you're down to where it's half a foot. So guys, they've gone from two and a half to three feet decline to a half foot decline. Okay, they have over doubled economic life of that aquifer. It works, guys. The lemons are working. Here is the other graph, because we need to adjust these for precipitation, precipitation right? Okay, so the red are post lima, the blue are pre lima. What we're seeing is for any level of precipitation, we're using less water. Okay, so you can't just say, hey, they had better than normal conditions. Even better than normal compared to what are normal before and after, they're using less water. Are they happy? Well, five-year program. Okay? 2018, they had the option of re-upping or dropping it. They re-upped for another five years. So were they happy? Yes. Okay? Three or four years ago, they came out with a district-wide Lima. Okay? The district-wide Lima reductions were not nearly as severe as the Sheridan Six. Sheridan 6 had the option of going with the district-wide Lima. They maintained their existing water use reductions. They agreed to reduce water use by 20%. Okay? Brownie's data showed that they reduced water use by 34%. Uh, so guys, they're reducing water use, they're still making money, they're happy. Let's talk about land price. Now, guys, there's a lot of things that go into land price. Okay, we know that recreation, wildlife, all that increases the value of land. But let's just think about land, the ag use value of land. Okay, what you get from crop production. We can say that the land, price of land, is equal to the net present value of future rents or future profits. Right? Two components. <coughs> The net present value says we're going to take 10 years, or we're going to take 20 years, or we're going to take 30 years in calculating, the, in calculating these revenues. Okay, so there's two components that go into value of land. One is how much you make a year, and two, how long you make that money. Everybody with me? Okay, if, you, if you've got land that generates $100 an acre, versus land that generates $200 an acre, which one's going to be worth more? $200. $200, okay, it's a simple concept. Okay, if you've got a land that's worth $200 an acre and is going to generate that $200 an acre for 20 years, you've got another produce land that generates $200 an acre for 10 years, which piece of land is going to be worth more? Longer. The one that has the 20 year, okay? So there's yeah. two components. So that's, if land renter profits go down, <laughs> Okay, that's going to put downward pressure on land prices. Okay, if rents or profits stay higher longer, that's going to put upward pressure on land prices. Okay, now what's going to happen here, or what have we seen that's going to happen? Well, guys, we don't know. I wish I, I wish I could show you my model. The problem is irrigated land does not change hands that often. Okay, so it's hard to get an answer to that. We just finished the project looking at land prices for the last 20 years uh, over the High Plains and guys, I thought we'd be able to find enough data up in Sheridan 6 to answer this question. There wasn't, just wasn't enough sales to be able to say definitively what happens to the land price. So we've got to find some other place to look. Okay, so what we're, so when we were having this discussion with Sheridan 6, the Kansas Water Office said, Bill, let's look at other areas that have lost water and see what happens there. How many people are aware of the Wet Walnut Creek of Guga? Guys, 92, early 90s, the state came in and did it wasn't local enhanced management areas, guys, it was on a Guga. It was a top down. They cut water use by at least 50%. Look what happened to revenue during that 50%. Woo, man, that was hard on them. 
wasn't it? They lost 50% of their income. But somehow, those producers adjusted to where in 2005, you couldn't tell the difference in the profit per acre that they were making. Somehow, those producers learned how to use less water. Now, what we're looking at is the trend in land prices. Okay, so remember this happened back in 92. So we had enough data to actually look parcel at parcel level sales and say what happened to land price inside the Aguca versus outside the Aguca. Can you see a difference in these two lines? The target area, the purple line, is the land price uh, adjustment inside the Aguca. The blue line is the land price outside the Aguca. Guys, there was no statistical difference in land price. Okay? Another area. Okay, so what have we, what have we learned from y'all in central Kansas? Well, guys, when we did this study, okay, when, Kansas, uh, when the Kansas Water Office asked me to look at land prices, I realized that for the 20 years before we did this study, y'all's water use had declined 25%. Okay? Wasn't because of Lima. Okay? Wasn't because of anybody stepping in saying you have to reduce land price, uh, uh, water use. What happened to y'all? Pumping no. yields. <laughs> Pumping yields went down. Yeah. What happened to well capacity? <coughs> Okay, so you lost well capacity, and all of a sudden, you were using 25% less than you were doing before. And so it was obvious to say, well, what happened to y'all's revenue, and what happened to y'all's land price? And to do an analysis, a comparative analysis, you need somebody to compare it to. So we compared it to GMV4. So when you look at the target group, which is GMD1 versus the control group, that's GMD4. We track total revenue, okay? Total value of crops produced, okay? And we can't see any difference. Now guys, these are indexed values, okay? That doesn't mean that y'all total revenue in GMD1 was the same as the total revenue in GMD4. What you do is you take your time series and you divide it by the first in the time series. Okay, so what this represents is a percent change every year. Okay, and what you see is that you can't tell a difference in y'all percent change in crop revenue during that period, even though y'all are reducing water use. Okay. Wait, wait a second, I, I want to understand. What years have you got up there? These are 1990 through 2008. Yeah, we did the study started this study in 2006 when we were working with the Lima group. Okay? And during that same time period, 25% water... Y'all reduced 25... Your water use 25%. Water use reduced 25%. Yes. Doctor, with the present day, modern sprinklers have a lot to do with that, though. Because we went... There's a lot of... It, it's evolved. In Wichita County, it evolved from height. And then it went up to a lot of surge valves. And then the guy said, well, hell, those sprinklers, they're getting a little cheap as opposed to changing the water. We're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot, of, a lot of sprinklers went in, and then Nosley. Right, so okay. A lot of changes in Nosley. We've done a lot to, efficient, to, to use less right. water because we had less water. Right, but now let me ask you this. Did the same thing not happen in GMD4? I don't know what happened. Yeah, so see, they can, you know, the, the conversion from flood to pivot has been pretty well uniform across western well, I Kansas. Think Northwest Kansas has been way ahead of us as far as use of sprinklers. Okay. Way ahead. And that might be a good point. There were, I mean there's been sprinklers okay. up in northwest Kansas. we I wouldn't say that we're slow learners. Well no but, I could. but what you're saying <laughs> is you use less water because you became more efficient. Right. Right. Okay, you adopt so it, it, it became part of it because there was less water there. We had to find a way to get it across the field. Okay, this is what happened to land price during that same period. Not saying that land price in GMD1 is the same as the land price in GMD4. We're also using index values 
And what we can say is there's no statistical difference in that trend. Okay? Y'all land price, even using less water, has gone up at the same rate as GMD4. So are we in a bubble on our land prices now, or is this the norm? Oh, I don't know. Don't, don't, get, me, don't yeah. get me started on that. No, I don't think we're in a bubble. Okay? I think we're in a bubble uh, maybe back in... Yeah, I think we were going into a bubble right there. Okay? But, but from 2003 to 2011, what has got seen up there? My pickups have got in seen Well, <laughs> we got, we're, we're getting off the point. I agree with you. <laughs> so, okay. What has got cheaper? I mean, it's just kind of impossible. All, all I can tell you is during this period that y'all were using less water, you did not have a change in land price that would reflect reduced water use. So did, so did GMD4's water use go down during that same period? I don't want to discuss you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Katie and I had a discussion, okay? So I did this study, okay? Yeah. Uh, and after I got it published, I gave it to GMD1. Now remember, this is 10 years ago, and I gave it to GMD4. And you know what the answer was? Bill never published this study, okay? It's going to make somebody look good. It's going to make somebody look bad. Don't publish this study. Okay, so we never published this. Okay, but anyway, uh, so I don't want y'all to go up and say, "Hey, we're really efficient, and you guys up in DMV four are really terrible." So what are you? I don't want them to come down here and say the same thing. And that's what the problem was: is nobody they didn't like my comparison. And I said, "That's the only thing I can compare it to. You got to have something to compare." It. Okay, conclusion: if producers are are, are Reporting enhanced profits, it's voluntary, there's no apparent uh, impact on land price. Now, I gave this presentation to a group of bankers about uh, two years ago. And, you know, I said, I, I wish I could tell you, I wish we had definitive answers. I said, the best thing I can do is tell you, don't worry about it, there's not going to be an impact on land price. Okay, and I had a guy raise his hand. Remember, this is bankers. <coughs> a guy raised his hand. Well, he didn't raise his hand. He stood up and said, Dr. Golden, you're wrong. Okay? He said, I'm the banker up in Hoxton. And I can tell you that my producers in the Lima are making more money and the land price in the Lima is going up relative to their neighbors. They have, they have got that offer under control. They've doubled the life of it. So guys, I, don't, I can't be that positive because I don't have the data. I'm kind of data driven. Okay? But that's it, and Katie, I'm sorry, I think I ran over time. You're fine. No, I appreciate the question. Any other, <coughs> excuse me, any other questions?